Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Rise and shine on this beautiful sunny day. If you've joined this broadcast, it's because we're going to be answering a very pertinent question. Some viewers out there are wondering, should we engage in the recreational activity known as We Happy Few? Well, let's find out, shall we? Um, uh, no. Should I take my joy? Yes, of course I should take my joy because I'm a good boy. Right. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Snug as a bug on a drug. There we go. We have beat the game. Right, so before we start, obvious spoiler warnings for We Happy Few, and no, this time I won't be talking about DLC content. And I also have a little secret to tell. I started writing for this video before I replayed the game, and I was using what I remembered the most to create the first rough draft. But then something crazy happened. I actually booted up the game and replayed and basically throughout the entire old video, because I clearly had suffered from delusional amnesia and possibly even trauma from the first time I played this, because I could not remember how bad it was. So TLDR for those who can't be asked to watch the whole video. Full respect to those who see it as a cult classic and can look past its many flaws, but when compared to an almost unplayably long catalogue of other games, there is absolutely no reason to play it. Now everything's better under the sun Talk in the dark Under your smile Come on. Go on, get a big old whack. No. So let's start off on a high note, shall we? <laughs> get it? Because they're high. Um, yeah. The story overall is fantastic, with very interesting narrative avenues not really explored before. The lore behind it is um, interesting, let's say, but still quite captivating. The theme of a guilt-ridden 1960s British dystopia is something not many games or visual media, if any to this extent, have explored before. With fantastic voice acting for a semi-large character base... It's Arthur! Well, why didn't you see that before? It's very easy to get hooked into this. That is, however, until you keep playing. And keep playing, and keep playing, and keep There's nothing to fear. There is a dangerous disconnect between the advertising, the beginning of the game, the incredible reveal of the rat. Come on, come on! Hit it, smash it, go on, smash it, silly face off. Go on, give it a big old whack. What are you waiting for? Really smack it! Come on! 
and then waking up in the garden district and the long, tedious gameplay loops you have to do after that. Oh, Christ. And now look I at this. I thought boss has chased me. Look at this. There were brief hot bars. I'm pretty sure I'm not in the parade day, anymore. Time. Uh, well I don't even think I'm still find in a way the village. up and out. A fucking navigation bar. Fucking way way markers with hol holographic text. Fucking health bar. A joy meter. And that ignored the big fucking text that came up on the screen temporarily. And <laughs> my main issue, which I experienced on my first playthrough, was that by the time I got to the end of Arthur's story and then Act 2 shows on the screen, my genuine heartfelt reaction was fuck that, and I closed it to never touch it again until making this video. When you build a game around a narrative, but don't lean into having enough unanswered questions or ambiguous story threads being raised to justify not an, just another part, but another two parts of the story, I mean, what do you expect? The story we followed to this point was of Arthur, with seemingly small side characters who we moved beyond. Why, therefore, would someone then want to spend just as long playing two of those other characters after already completing what they believed was the entire story? I think a potential way to fix this is notifying at the very beginning in some way that there are multiple acts and each follow a different character, Arthur, Sally and Ollie. It would also make you pay much more attention when those other two characters are there. Another thing as well is that from what I've heard from others, because yes, I'm not playing any goddamn more of this game than the first act even now, the second act is incredibly annoying with the mechanic of Sally's baby, but we will leave the talk of mechanics for that section. Also, the final character Ollie's playthrough is supposedly... Uh, rough to say the least, with the final act seemingly lacking much story content and deciding to make the playtime extended by making enemy encounters the most frequent and annoying in the game. But that brings us back full circle to the first and obviously best character, Arthur. Interesting introduction, a tragic backstory that unfortunately gets thrown in your face with a train whistle every 30 minutes and the person you'll spend the most of the time with, especially if you quit at the end of Act 1 like I did, with just one small problem. Putting this delicately, he's a sniveling annoying cunt. I hate to say it, but when I play a character in a game, I don't want to play as someone who is about as relatable as a Greg steak bake covered in bird shit and homeless people's piss. The game found every possible way to make me just frustrated to be him. And yes, from a story perspective, technically it fits him perfectly. But a character is also about relatability in video games, because you play as them. It would be like writing a book in English, but the main character speaks Taiwanese. The disconnect is just too much for me. Overall, the characters are great with way too many flaws to be overlooked, and ultimately the characters can only be as good as the story they fit into. Oh, for fuck's sake, Ollie. And with a lot of the story being padded for time by forced interactions and massive random fetch quests, it just ends up leaving a sour taste in your mouth. Overall, like I mentioned at the start, some of the best parts of this game can be found in the story and characters, so if you really do want to give this a go, go for it and have fun. But for me, due to a long list of other issues, I'm going to give this section a neutral point, neither great nor terrible. The game being a collectathon is a bit fun at the start when you're just starting to run around, but by the time you've passed your 100,000 mile party, collecting another berry bush and another bloody flower just becomes a bit, well, fucking pointless. It would also be really nice if there wasn't a tutorial and pop-up and status bar for absolutely everything. 
That, this, this has actually forced me to do this. Another fucking tutorial! Another fucking tutorial! And try and leave this area. Fucking tool tip. Another fucking tool tip. Another fucking tutorial! And another one. And a fucking another one. And a fucking another one. And boom! Tutorial. Oh, and, and, another, and another fucking big block of text. I suppose he's just another rotten downer like us. <sighs> there are, however, no useful tutorials or pop-ups. It drops you in, gives you an overflow of mechanics and things to understand, and says, uh, Yeah, fucky, good luck, Tommy. There is genuinely more bloody pop-ups than a watch movie free online website. It breaks the flow completely of your gaming experience to throw another block of text at you. And it happens so often. Good luck trying to remember it though. To cause a distraction, select your gadget quick slot with three and tap three again until you cycle to a bottle. Raise the bottle with F. Even when they craft a specific experience to teach you a mechanic, they still will throw an essay at you. When you consume food, your maximum stamina increases for a short time. When you're too hungry, your maximum stamina decreases. When you drink, the cost of drinking in it. Fuck. God damn it. I also found that the HUD was spamming so much bullshit information into my eyes that I actively wanted to quit the game then and there multiple times. I went into the settings, turned off every single possible HUD element, and it still forced parts into my gameplay experience like a four-year-old. I was genuinely shocked, even with me going back into a second playthrough expecting an unenjoyable experience, to find that it was somehow even worse than my memory of it. One of the largest issues for me was that without using the video game HUD or menu, there was absolutely no way to know where you needed to go at any given point. No indicators, no signs, no waypoints, no built-in in-game way to know where to go. Even the map they give you in the menu just automatically gives a marker of exactly where you need to go. I think a massive opportunity was missed here to make the game less of a running sim and more of a detective figuring out the clues kind of game based off of the information that you're given. The joy meter is simply annoying and just gets in the way for normally absolutely no reason. It seems like they forgot to develop a whole part of it too, although now I can't remember off the top of my head what that was. Overdosing or no joy just means everyone spots you instantly, so you run, hide, and wait until they forget about you. Amazing gameplay. My personal favorite type of gameplay mechanics are the ones that actively stop you from playing. There seems to be a theme here. But before you say, oh, George, you fucking idiot, you need to collect the upgrade point things. It gives you like the powers and stuff and it's not a problem. And I'd reply with, thank you for your consideration, but I don't think good gameplay mechanics should rely on you removing them via arbitrary upgrade points. Maybe it should have been designed well in the first place. And just like every other damn part of this game, it's only there for one reason and one reason alone. Play time extension. Almost every single mechanic in this game is designed to make you play longer for no discernible reason. Stamina bar, inventory cap, spend time to go back to your nearest hatch, side quest that sends you halfway across the map three times for a rubber duck, combat being clunky and slow, joy ran out and you need to hide in a trash can for the 50th time. This game smacks you around the face with cheap, not thought out ways to extend the time it takes for you to do something, giving an illusion of content and achievement to those who are so brain dead for minute dopamine hits that they would play Clash Royale at their parents' funerals. Okay, breather. I did exaggerate a little bit there. Combat can actually be quite fun in this game. All the other points stand. <laughs> I think the general problem with the gameplay mechanics is that you believe all of it is necessary. So you spend the time, you do the extra quests, you collect the fucking bullshit, and then you realize there's still so much more to this game and that you didn't need to get burnt out from doing all of the extra stuff. 
the game needed to have decided between a British Minecraft or being an interesting and involved story, but decided both, and they both fell apart as a result. I've got to find a Jesus. place to fucking hide. Oh, Why from all these fucking police officers and such? Alright, can I hide here? So we'll keep this section very short. It's very stylized and enjoyable to look at and play. We've got to love a bit of sunshine and rainbows, don't we, mate? Yeah. The characters are very well designed. The setting, where there actually is content, is very good. No complaints here. It really is the best part of the game. I am on Ultra Graphics. Genuinely the best graphics possible. And it's like, they focus on these like beautiful looking old ripped up posters, but then you just turn around and look at the grass. This is with Kickstarter backing. This is with publisher backing. There really is too much of nothing with too few focus points of things to do. The random generation side of this really does spoil it because you can either get very lucky and have a fantastic experience in the world, hitting story beat after story beat, or the complete opposite. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I think it would have been better to have had a story mode, which was laid out and specifically planned, with then another separate mode which incorporates the random generation where it was specifically for replayability. Getting stuck between the open world and narrative route really ruined this game for many as it ended up getting the worst of both. If it was a pure open world random experience without a specific story, you could focus on more random events by planning around them, having a general story that you have to uncover in a general order and piece together all the parts. If it was purely narrative focused, you could focus on better world building and specific events that trigger in certain areas more. You could frame it better and more artistically knowing where someone needs to go and where they will go through. Now make sure there isn't a short circuit to <laughs> Fucking apprentices. Once again, this ties back to the issue I mentioned where there's no telegraphing where you need to go for objectives outside of a magic map that just marks exactly where the next story element is. The best part for me is the big city, and yet that was at the very, very end. And at that point, you just want to get it over and done with. It's like a YouTube video with an incredibly boring start. There's nothing about it that will suddenly make someone watch till the end where it gets good because they've already clicked off. I also think that we could have had a lot more variation to things like house types and sizes and shapes and layouts with secrets to discover of the citizens instead of it just being another collectathon as a panty snatcher. Why are you not sleeping? <laughs> Do I really need to say anything here? The AI? Softlocks? Hundreds and hundreds of meters of running to faraway objectives? If you can reach them at all, that is. Collisions, out of bounds issues, the list really does go on and on. I think because of recent games, we have an expectation of just putting up with the shit we get given, especially because the devs will release an absolutely terrible game, promise to fix it and then stop development on it once the refund window closes. There is however one small example that breaks the mould. No Man's Sky is the game where everybody now cheers for it despite its extremely rocky beginning. They fell completely flat on the launch and instead of giving up they didn't just fix the game, they improved and improved and improved. We Happy Few might have fixed a few issues but never went above and beyond the bare minimum. And like, this ladder, can I climb it? No, I have to hold E and fade to black. Fade back in, and I'm at the top. You didn't- I found your key. 
Oh, you're a good egg, you are. What am I doing during this time, right, that I'm not doing when I then open and close it right now? Oh, yeah. Because even, even games from 20 fucking years ago are still able to have a mechanic where if there's a projector and you jump in front of it, it blocks the fucking view. So stupid. Technically speaking, I've now crossed the barrier into the internal soundscape. External soundscape, internal soundscape. How did these things not get picked up? Run, if you don't want to end up like him. <gasps> oh my god. I like how it's meant to be this whole thing of like really scary. Oh no, run. From what? She just ran directly into me. I am mighty now. Wow, those are some juicy polygons. What can I say? Did you? Oh my good fuck. Um, uh, okay. So obviously there's the whole issue with the publisher drama. Um, others have gone into it with infinitely more detail than I ever could about the controversy about them joining a publisher. Everyone knows it ruined the expectations and in turn the game. There is almost always an issue that comes from indie devs trying to suddenly pour their indie game into a AAA product mid-development. They really would have been better off without them. And obviously the price, need I say more. Right, so, boom. Review done. Hope you're fucking happy, Jack. The final result of my highly informed and definitely not subjective and biased score is... Uh, yeah, it's uh, minus three out of six. God, this game fucking sucks. So this game isn't terrible, but it also is not good. It had the potential to be the next Bioshock, but scope, mechanics... Issues and bugs and lost potential have turned this into, well, You this. made your mind up yet, love? Just fucking wake up. Come on, you're obviously tired. Come here. You're obviously a bit fucking tired, come here. Get to fucking sleep. <laughs>